with the kind of run we've had lately, are there still any pockets of value out there? You know, I, I think there are, and, and I think you have to look a little bit harder. Um, but it's really telling to me that, you know, if you look at the top five stocks in the S&P 500, you've had a really tremendous run, maybe 250 percent or so on average since maybe 2018. But if you look at the other 495, um, you're looking at returns that are probably half that. So the, t the headline indices don't always tell you the full story about what's going on. And I also would say that you know, there's many unloved sectors that are still out there, and I actually think financials are one of those. Um, you know, we focus a lot on the mega cap names and the high flying technology and some of these retail names, um, but financials have actually been the market leader over the past six months uh, with a return of almost 30 percent. They've actually beat the technology sector over the last six months. So there are pockets of value out there um, when you compare to these large, huge uh, mega cap names. Yeah, I mean, listen, they're not sexy, but. You know, oil and banks have been the. It's like it's like a. It's like the original game of Monopoly, right? Oil and I don't know, railroads or radio companies, but oil and banks have been the big money makers the last three to six six months. Do you expect? Obviously, it sounds like you like the financials. Do you expect energy to continue its run? Sure. So you mentioned energy and financials. I think that's interesting because those two sectors have the highest positive correlation to rising yields. So if we do think that there's some modest inflation um, risks building in the pipeline, then those are two sectors that you may want exposure to. Um, and I think the rally that you're seeing in those two sectors are, are probably, um, you know, sort of tied to this rise in yields, particularly financials. Energy, of course, has other things going on. You know, you hear about the Permian base being uh, reduced production right now due to the freeze in the South. So there's other, you know, idiosyncratic things that were there, but um, they are quite correlated with what's happening in yields. Yeah, in fact, uh, Citigroup, your ultimate parent company, their commodity head, Ed Morse, had a note last night that basically said there could be longer term implications of these wellheads being frozen and, and what's happening. And everybody is tripping over themselves to raise their, their oil forecast in terms of pricing. Right. Do you think on a macro level, though, Sean, you know, listen, the pandemic will end. Uh, life will return to whatever we want to call normal, whether it might look slightly different in the near term. Will rates ultimately rise again? Maybe not this year. And if they do, or when they do, how do we start prepping for it now? So I think rate, there is a chance that rates will continue to rise. Um, I'm not exactly sure when that rise stops. So some of this is pricing in inflation expectations. Um, and if you think about what's about to happen with inflation, some of it um, is tied to an increase in raw material prices and energy. Uh, a lot of it is what's tied, what we call base effects. So you're comparing this year's data with last year's data. And when you get to March and April, you're going to be comparing against a time frame uh, when the economy was in lockdown and, and sort of in free fall. So you're going to see higher inflation prints. And I do think the market may be sensitive to that in the months ahead, um, particularly when they consider what is the Federal Reserve going to do in the future um, if the pandemic does end and the economy is recovering faster than they anticipate. Um, so I think there's a chance that yields continue to be higher. Yeah, very quickly, are your clients asked if the work from home trade is over? Uh, no, I actually haven't heard much about that, to be honest. You know, I do think, you know, there's going to be some expectation that how much, how many goods do you need, right? So I think we'll see a rotation away from this demand for goods, um, you know, exercise bikes, uh, you know, streaming services and stuff, and maybe move, move more towards the services sector of the economy. So that's what we're really kind of preparing our clients for. And um, eventually there's going to be huge demand um, for leisure yeah. and hospitality when this comes to an end. So we're preparing that way. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.